Hi guys, Olive here, here today to recommend you 10 different books that I really enjoyed that I think would work particularly well for you if you find yourself in isolation. The news is absolutely terrifying right now. There's probably no need to say any more than that. I think a good number of us, if we haven't already, will be looking at an extended period of time in isolation, even just as a preventative measure. And as such, most of us will probably have a lot more reading time on our hands. So for this recommendations video, I picked 10 books that I think suit the situation well, nothing too heavy, at least in terms of real life issues. I tried to focus on books that I thought would be good for escapism or things that would lighten the mood a little bit. I also tried to focus on backlist books, books that have been out for a little while, so they're a little bit easier to get your hands on. As a quick side note, even if the physical branch of your library has closed down for a period of time, as mine has, many library systems do make available digital media items for you to check out through different apps. Please go check out your library's website and see if that's available for you. And finally, when I was narrowing down this list of recommendations, I was sure to pick at least some books that tie into other activities so you can have a more interactive experience. That will make more sense as I go through the list. So let's start out with some fantasy recommendations because as far as escapism goes, fantasy makes a great choice. In case you have not yet read Uprooted by Naomi Novik, this would be a great time to read it. It is one of my very favorites. This book is set in a small village that is protected from an evil encroaching forest by a wizard they call the dragon. Every 10 years, he takes as tribute a 16-year-old girl from the village who is special in some kind of a way. She's exceptionally beautiful. She's talented. She's smart. You get the idea. As that 10-year mark comes closer, everyone in the village thinks that the beautiful, perfect Kasha is going to be the one chosen. But when the time comes, it's actually our main character, the clumsy Agnieszka, who is chosen instead. And no one, including Agnieszka, knows why she was chosen. This book is extremely fast paced. I found it to be incredibly absorbing, perfect for times like these. Along similar lines is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. And the reason why I say they're somewhat similar is that Uprooted is based off of Eastern European folklore. And this book takes inspiration from Russian folk tales. And they both feature the slow creep of an evil forest. These two books are very reminiscent of one another. So if you like one, it is highly likely that you will enjoy the other. And the reason why I mention it in addition to Uprooted is that where Uprooted is a standalone book, this book is the start of a trilogy. So lots of content to bench through. My other two fantasy recommendations in this video are also fast paced books that start series. The first of those two is Owl and the Japanese Circus by Christy Cherish. This is very much a departure from the folklore based fantasy I was just speaking about because this one is an urban fantasy novel. We follow main character Alex, who's known as Owl, mainly when she's working. It just so happens that Owl is a former archaeologist student who, after she was unceremoniously ousted from her archaeology program, turned into an international antiquities thief. Owl is basically a snarky female version of Indiana Jones who travels with a vampire detecting cat and who is also notoriously bad at interpersonal relationships. But all of these things make these books extremely fun to read. I've read the first two out of the total four that are out right now. They read extremely quickly. And also, if you like audiobooks and you use Audible at all, since these are Audible exclusives, you might like the audiobooks for these because they happen to be narrated by Christy Carlson Romano aka the voice of Kim Possible. And the last fantasy book that starts a series that I would recommend to you if you prefer your fantasy on the grittier side is The Last Werewolf by Glenn Duncan. This series follows, unsurprisingly, the very last werewolf known to exist on Earth. However, 200 year old Jake Marlowe is losing the will to live. He's the last of his kind out there and he is dead tired of being hunted down by anti-paranormal organizations. However, there are a few developments in the book that give him renewed purpose and he comes out swinging. This whole series is definitely not for the faint of heart, but I found it to be so gripping. I've always compared the reading experience of these books to drinking a big glass of straight dark whiskey. Moving on to some mysteries, which I think are really absorbing and great for taking your mind off of things. The first one I would like to recommend is one I actually just finished this month. It's called Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. This one has been incredibly hyped up ever since it came out. 
and for good reason. It is essentially two mysteries for the price of one. Both are equally interesting and equally as well done, and together they make this book unputdownable. We start off by hearing from a woman who works for a publisher. She has just recently received a manuscript for what will be the final novel in a beloved detective series that her company publishes. We then dive into reading that manuscript along with her. We're hearing that detective story, but then at a certain point the manuscript cuts off and we go back to this woman's perspective as she starts to do some digging into a mystery surrounding the author. This book has such a good books about books feel to it. You have the publishing industry component and you also have all these references to other mystery novels and other mystery authors. It is the ultimate curl up with a good book type of mystery and it also has a sequel coming out this August so this is a great time to pick it up. Then I would like to recommend the first book in Tana French's Dublin Murder Squad series which is called In the Woods, although I should mention that any of the six books in this series can technically be read out of order. In this book, a detective who was the sole survivor of a mysterious incident in his childhood must, as an adult, return to this exact same wooded area, but this time as a detective. A young girl was also murdered in those exact same woods, and so he and his partner are on the case. This is also a bit of a two-for-one kind of book because not only do you have the mystery of what happened to this detective in his childhood, but you also have the murder case that he and his partner are working. I really love Tana French. I think the first three books in this series are her strongest, although I enjoyed all of them. Also, starting to touch upon those interactive elements I mentioned earlier in the video, there is actually a TV series that is based upon the first two books in this series. It's called Dublin Murders and it aired on Stars. So if you wanted to, you could read the first two books in the series and then move directly on to watching that TV show. The last mystery I'm going to recommend you in this video is is probably the most fast-paced mystery I've mentioned thus far. It is called Confessions by Kane Minato. The book starts off when a Japanese school teacher is addressing her class, and she mentions that unfortunately her toddler daughter has just passed away. But then she states that someone in their classroom, someone in their midst, is responsible for her daughter's death. We shift perspectives several different times in the book, getting all the different sides to the story, and it goes absolutely nowhere that you would expect. It is one of the most twisty, turny, bonkers books that I have ever read, and you will absolutely fly through it. But if you're looking for something much lighter that's not a fantasy or a mystery, I do have three suggestions for you. The first is the enormously fun and heartwarming Where'd You Go Bernadette by Maria Semple, which is all about an eccentric Seattle mother who goes missing. Her preteen daughter decides to go looking for her, and as we're hearing that story, we're also starting to find out that the mother, Bernadette, has a whole lot more backstory than we originally knew about. This book is extremely funny and enjoyable, and I also really enjoyed the movie version that they made out of it, starring Kate Blanchett, which at the time I'm filming right now is available to stream on Hulu. So if you've been meaning to read this book or see the movie, or maybe even both, now would be a great time to do that. And lastly, I have two fun, lighthearted works of nonfiction to recommend to you. The first of those two is called as If by Jen Cheney. This is an oral history of the making of the movie Clueless, as told by everyone who was there during production. I promise you, even if you think you know everything about the movie Clueless, this will provide new insider info. This, of course, would pair amazingly with a rewatch of Clueless, but also if you've recently read or reread Emma by Jane Austen or seen the new movie adaptation, this would be a great one to pick up because in case you didn't know, Clueless is a retelling of Emma. My last recommendation for you in this video is one of the best books I've read since joining BookTube, and it also doubles as another nostalgia throwback. It is called How Music Got Free by Stephen Witt, and it is all about the music industry and the beginnings of digital piracy in the late 90s, early 2000s. In the book, he discusses the development of the MP3 file. He talks about how music piracy got started when people began smuggling CDs out of production facilities and ripping them to put online. And he also talks about the music industry and how they reacted to this piracy. Every single person I have pushed this book on has enjoyed it as much as I did. So even if it sounds remotely interesting to you, I highly encourage you to pick it up. And 
You can also have an interactive experience with this one by streaming some of the music that he discusses in the book, because there is no such thing as too many repeat plays of Hey Ya by Outkast. So those are my recommendations for keeping your brain happily distracted and occupied during these unsettling times. If you have any comments or questions for me regarding any of these recommendations or anything in general, please feel free to leave that in my comment section below. But you can also find me on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of those profiles will be in the description box below. Please everyone stay safe, stay healthy, happy reading. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.